Hello everybody and today we're going to go over how to make a competitive list for Necrons. The first thing I must say, I see a lot of people do this lately. Fill your malls, Immotech and Encryptech. But the problem is with this, look at the points. It's 690 points before you even start a game. And another bad thing is you're also locked into the dynasty of Sautech. So if you build this list you have to basically build your list around this to make it work. Let me show you how I like to make lists, okay? What I like to do, I like to do this. I like to put Unbound Faction on, like so. And now I like to make my list to have synergy with every unit put in there. So the trick to a competitive list is have a unit that has more than one to two rolls, okay? So let's just pretend I want to make a Mortal Wound Detachment. This will not be a competitive list, but it will be a fun list. And it will be quite nasty. So let's just say you want to go for Mortal Wounds. So you have several ways to do this. You can go Katans, you can go da da da, Doom Scythes and so on. I know a lot of people have been using these lately and I personally don't like these because of this. Before you start, you have 450 points and then you have to use a command point every turn and it goes off on a 3 slash 4 plus with a command point reroll. So for me that's a waste of points. Personally, I don't like these, okay? If you want to do the flyer mold wounds, I would take these instead. Okay, and the reason why I would take these, they don't need command points, okay, and uh, the Tesla is a lot better. It's Assault 8, okay, and the Strength 7, which is good. Because you can fly these around, drop mortal wounds on something, turn 1, and then you can also put 8 shots per plane, Strength 7 into a monstrous creature, so I guess toughness 6, toughness 7, I have a good chance of wounding it. So for the points, I think this is a better investment, because the death rate kind of sucks, and if you take them, you force into the Sautech dynasty. So I personally would rather take these, check them in the Mephrit dynasty for the minus one Tesla, fly over a massive unit, do, what was it, 16 d6 mortal wounds on a 3+, plus, and then just blast the big creatures with the Assault 8, and then follow up some long-range weapons. So that's nice, that's three units there, that's not too bad for mortal wounds. Let's check some synergy into that, so you want to get the most out of those Teslas, so you want, you want to check in, say, two Stalkers. So we have some nice anti-tank here, some Mortal Wounds. Um, another good way for Mortal Wounds is the Scarab. The idea I'm showing you now is not just chuck stuff together. I may look like I'm doing this, but there's Method of the Madness. The reason why I've done this is because Mortal Wounds a good semi monstrous creature tank killer with the Strength 7 Tesla. 24 shots a turn is quite nasty. You can be boosted by the Triax Stalker to reroll ones, and if you make a minus one, minus 1 AP, even better. So they just become very nasty. And you not spend command points every turn. These are a good objective holding unit, a good mortal wounds eating unit, and a good screen. And there's also a way to do mortal wounds. But these also use command points, so you basically want to take some troops as well, just for the command points you need. We're going to keep it cheap first, okay, another good uh, tip is put the bare necessity in and then add to it later. So we've got this. So right now the, the immortals will hold objectives in the back line. The scabs will run up, hold objectives, do more wounds if needed, screen for orcs and such. The Triax Stalkers can buff the, scow um, the Night Shrouds or the Immortals, or they can just run up on, on their own and cause mayhem. So you can give them the Heat Ray, which I probably would in this list. Okay, the bare minimum for HQs is the cheapest HQ, which is the Lord, so we'll just chuck two Lords off for now and we'll, re we'll replace these. So we've now got a Battalion Detachment. Okay. Well, another good tip is when you finish making your list in Unbound, Put the right attachments on and fill it in and make sure everything's okay. So we got this so far. Mortal Wounds here, they can do a lot of damage. Mortal Wounds here, Stalkers, Immortals, and these Lords, I don't really like these, they'll be replaced in a minute. So let's just remove two Lords and put the Cryptax in, because these have use. Right, so the idea of this list is Mortal Wounds. So I would say... Where is he? The... This guy. The Transcendent Satan. I'll give him the Cosmic Tyrant because two powers a turn for Mortal Wounds is good. So we have Flyers, this guy for Mortal Wounds, we have the, the 
scab up some mortal wounds. Right, and another good thing now, right, is because we got all this here, so let's say now you want another way for mortal wounds, okay? Do you remember my video about the Destroy Lord? He is so bad, you can put him with anything, he becomes good. Okay. So let's put the worst HQ in there we got. Where is he? If I can find the damn guy. There he is, Destroy Lord. What I'm gonna do is put this Destroy Lord in a South Tech Outrider detachment, okay? So he'll have the South Tech Dynasty keyword, and so will these scabs here. Okay, so what I would do now, I would give the Destroy Lord the Epistle Staff. So I'd run these up with the scabs to do mortal wounds, and every turn then, you shoot in them with a staff that can do mortal wounds. And the staff itself doesn't cost command points. So what we have now, we have a katan, two mortal wound powers a turn, a night shroud to mortal wounds on turn one, or turn two if you're feeling lucky, and we'll have the scabs themselves if needed. So it's one, two, three, there's four units in this army that can do mortal wounds a turn. And as you can see now, if you put them all together, they all have a role. But the biggest problem we have with this, we don't have a good horde killing unit, okay? Because the nice shrouds are strength 7, you don't want to waste these on toughness score units, you want to shoot tanks and so on. So this is this will double up as a tank killer or a monstrous creature killer, so you don't need many anti-tank guns in your army. The two stalkers should be enough. What I would suggest now is maybe chuck one of these up to Tesla, up a unit of 10 up. This will also help kill orcs and gene stealers and so on. So now we have an anti horde unit, and because it's 40k, you might want to have two units of anti horde. So you might want to put either another unit of these at the 10 or take another option. What I would say is take a Doomsday Arc. This, this guy will double up as the anti horde, and he also has the option of taking pot shots at tanks. So what we've we done now, we've got the command points needed to generate more wounds for the scarab. We have a battalion, so we have a, we have objective secured if needed. We have scarabs for midfield objective holding and mortal wounds. We have mortal wounds on the flyers, and we have mortal wounds generation every turn for free with all command points by with the katan and with the destroyer lord. You could also then, because we've got some points left over, you can get rid of one of these cryptics and check in an overlord. Okay. Keep them cheap as possible. There we go. So now we have synergy from the overlord. If needed, you can buff the immortals here. So if you fight an orcs, you need that extra oomp. Hide out a line of sight turn one. Jump out. Might will be done this guy. And cause some mayhem. If they get too close, you got a doomsday arc with rapid fire with a show of four guns. Long range, you have the Triarch Stalkers, you have the Night Sights for turn 1 and Mortal Wounds if needed. And you also have the Katan for Mortal, for mortal Wound generation every turn. And the main point is, everything has synergy. The Destroy Lord has the option to run up with the Scarabs. You can stay back and guard your lines, or you can go run off towards an objective. The Abyssal Staff is actually not too bad in combat as well, believe it or not. So this guy is so bad he becomes good because you can put him in any detachment you want and not be locked down to anything. So I would check this destroy load in South Tech, run him up to the Scarabs, and then I've picked a minus one AP because the Knight Scythes will be very handy with the minus one Tesla. So this is my t this is my little trick of how I make nasty lists. Like I said, this is not a competitive competitive list, but this is how I do it. We have an extra 53 come out uh, 53 points, so what can we do? Let's just say you want to like get the morse of that overlord. Let's put this into Tesla. Oops, if I can get that there. Stupid mouse. Right, like so. Oh, look at that. Right. We have two units now of Tesla, but we're over. What we need to do now is get rid of 22 points somehow. What can we get rid of? Hmm, maybe a scar up here. And a scar up here. Okay, so we're four points under. We can grab. This is why I would recommend use Basquai because this is just time saving. Da, 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 da. Ah, get the most out of that points. And there we go. We have a mortal wound dynasty. But the method I'm trying to show you is don't just run towards the battalion attachment. Chuck three your mortals in and then go from there. With Necrons, you need to go backwards. You need to give your army a field roll and and. Work your way backwards, because I want to go Mortal Wounds just for fun. I don't like the Doom size. I want to take these. 
So let's go over, well, I would say, a more competitive list. This is not why I use, but I'm going to go over, go over why I pick this unit. Right, I'm going to pick a Terzo right now. The idea of these is have one inside of the army. So anybody that deep strikes in, they'll be nine inches away. And they have to roll three dice instead of two and pick the, and discard the highest, so which which makes a nine inch charge very hard. So I personally will take two Terzo of Arcs on this list, just to stop deep strikes and charges. I'll throw on the outside, like a V, like so on. So they have to come from the middle, and I'll bring my immortals back if I take immortals. So I take these for anti-charge, I want more I want more anti-tank firepower, because Shadow Fate's not good enough. I don't want to spend the extra points on the, on the Doomsday Arcs though, because I, these are expensive. So I'll just take three... where the hell are they? I'll just take three Stalkers, just for that Shadowfate gun. I'll invite them all with a heavy Gauss Cannon. So these guys now will sit back on the objectives and be guarded by these guys. And if needed, turn two, turn three, these will go out and get me objectives. Just screw it, I might take three of these. Why not? Ah. Right, take three of those. One to get objectives. But now it's starting to get expensive, so I'll take some Tomb Blades. One, two. Right, Tomb Blades, I'm taking these for Objective Grabbers, Anti-Charge, anti and so on. So right now I have Anti-Tank, if needed these can double up now with the Tomb Blades to give me Anti-Horde. We run them once in tears, it's very dangerous. And these are Anti-Charges, Anti-Deep Strikes, and they also have flat 3 damage. So these are brilliant for killing anything with 2 to 3 wounds. I love these uh, tanks. Another good thing to note is if you fight something that's tough as 10, but it's not a vehicle, you wound on 2 of the flamer. Okay, so the overwatch is very nasty with this. The mama charges you with 2 to wound. D6 auto hits. Very lovely. Okay, so we got that. Anti tank is here. Semi anti tank, anti charge, objective grabbers. I need some sort of synergy now with the HQ, so the cryptic will go nicely with the Terzo arc, arc. Or the Tomb Blades, depending on what army I fight, so I'll check in the cryptic. So right now, I can run this as the Elite Detachment for one command point, or the Heavy. So right now, I have the choice between two detachments, whichever I want to use. If I wanted an extra command point, I can just add in one extra HQ. But for now, I like to keep this as low as possible, so i got 400 points to have to play with. I think I want some Scarabs, because I like Scarabs. I've noticed that my game's nice, I started to take just units of 9, uh, units of 3. I hide out line of sight and just run up the board and try and camp an objective late game. So right now I'm forced to take the fast attack detachment, because I have over 3. Okay. There's one command point for all this. It's worth it because I don't need command points. Because the only thing here that actually uses command points is the scabs for more wounds. But I put these in my list to daisy chain in front in case we fight an orcs or gene seal occult. I don't mind losing three units of scabs turn one, and then blasting them with the tomb blades. But the main role is to eat smite if I need it, like a thousand suns and so on, or just run up and grab an objective. These are basically my cheap objective grabbers. I'll get an objective turn two, turn three, and just leave them the whole game. The tomb blades, these are my board control, and they also synergize with the crypt deck, but I will give them the crow, because you can heal these and keep up with the tomb blades. I give him the upgrade for Ignore's cover, so I don't have to spend command points. And that way then, I'm saving command points every turn. So right now I have all them Tomb Blades causing mayhem, semi-anti-tank, anti-tank, and it also double ups anti-horde if, if I combo them with this. And because I'm basically happy with that, I don't really care what else I add into it. For me, I, I can take this out and I can kick some major butt with it. I'm happy with this. So I got some extra points, I could add in something else that I'm lacking. Maybe some sort of way of doing more wounds, but the katana too much po too many points. I will take a one unit of immortals though, I do find them quite handy for objective secured. Give them Tesla, just for more anti-horde in case my two layers do die. So I'll take an overload, so I got two extra command points. I can run one with a fast attack, and one with the elite. So I have two extra command points, plus three, so I start the game with five command points, I'm happy with that. And I think I'll just give the Overlord, I think I'll just take an extra scab if I can fit with it. Ah. Yes. Feed me my scabs. Look at that. Awesome. 
So I have an emergency supply of immortals. Overlord. So this I would say is semi competitive. It probably would kill a lot of people. And I know people are out there saying, oh that sucks, you know, you're good enough command points. But take a good look at this list. The only thing you really need command points for is the Tesseract Arcs with D6 damage. That is it. And you can only use that once per turn, so that's three command points gone just for the reroll, so that's it. I have two command points spare and I don't think I'll ever need it. I would make the Cryptek the Overlord. Ah, uh, the Warlord, sorry. And I'd give him the... where is it? Ah... Uh, well, the Warlord trait for... Automa automatically pass morale. So that way, and the Cryptek can run up with the Tomb Blades. And if I lose all my Tomb Blades, I've got one left, apart from one. We don't, I don't have to spend command points for auto pass morale. So that way then I'm saving command points every turn on morale tests. These can't fail morale tests because you need units of one. So I need no command points for this list. And because the way it's structured, I might make one stalker a heat ray. A chuck in the middle of the army on the first turn. They're fighting against a the horde then. They have to get through scarabs. I put the stalker then just in front of the immortals. And I put the immortals by the other side of it. And that way then, they might multi-charge the Stalker, if he kills the Scabs, and the Immortals. And that way I get to reroll ones in Overwatch. Turn 2, you can run the Heat Ray 1 up, do some damage, and sit an objective. So that is my advice on how to make competitive lists for Necrons, okay? I basically like to work backwards with Necrons, because I think our HQs are just so expensive, they can't really pull their own weight. So I like to keep these down as low as possible, as little as possible. So, and be honest with you, if I took this list against most people, I think I'd have a good chance of winning. Okay, and I still got some objective secured if I need it, and some emergency anti-horde. So thank you all for watching, and I will catch you all again in the next video.